All right. Hey there, Rivet Crew. Happy Monday. Hope you had a great weekend. We are starting out this week of workouts with a very simple couplet. We have some wall balls and we have some running. Can't get simpler than that. We're doing 10 rounds for time, 15 wall balls for our CrossFit athletes, 10 wall balls for our Fit30 athletes, and then 200 meter run. So what we got today is ideally rounds that take about a minute and a half to two minutes or so um, in a workout, total workout that takes about 15 to 20 minutes or so. Um, as I said before, CrossFit athletes, 15 wall balls per round. We want to get through these as unbroken as possible. One of the challenges of today's workout is getting bigger sets of wall balls. I love everybody to shoot for doing their sets of 15 and unbroken as much as they can. If they do have to break, definitely no more than one quick rest, but we're shooting for as unbroken as possible. Same thing with our Fit30 athletes. You guys will be doing sets of 10 every time. I'd love to see people coming in and doing boom, 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 knocking out 10 wall balls unbroken before going out for the next run. But if you do have to take a break, take just one, make it really short. Um, wall ball performance, let me give you a few tips here. Let's start at the top and work our way down. So throughout the course of the workout, we have a pretty high volume of wall balls. Um, one thing that tends to burn out on people is the shoulders, right? Because we're throwing that ball up to our target. As a reminder, that's 10 feet for the men, nine feet for the women. Um, shoulders get a little bit burnt out there. One way to avoid or uh, possibly sort of delay, I should say, shoulder fatigue is to not hold your arms up in the air waiting for the ball to come back down. So here's what we do. Ball goes up, right? We have the ball right here, right about face level. Ball goes up. And rather than standing there waiting for the ball to come back down and catching it like this, throw the ball up and immediately drop the hands back down, drop the arms back down. This lets the shoulders relax while the ball is in the air. Now this is only for, I don't know, a second or so, but across the course of all the wall balls you're gonna do in the workout today, it really makes a difference. If you're standing there like this the entire time, shoulders get fatigued, but if you throw the ball up, let them relax, catch it right here, it's gonna be better. Next tip, catching. So something we often see with wall balls, is people are, they have their hands down here, relax, like you're supposed to, that's great. Um, but what often happens is as, before the ball actually lands in the hands, they're already starting to squat. What happens is they start to squat, so the hips and knees are already kind of softened, then they catch the weight of the ball and everything kind of crushes forward. We end up in this forward position. Remember, we always want to try and stay as upright in the torso as we can when we're doing weighted squats. So. Cast the ball here, and then as soon as you feel that ball right there, that's when we start the squat, right? So throw it up, relax the hands, catch. As soon as you catch, start your squat, right? This is gonna enable you to stay a little more upright in the torso as you're doing your squat down and up. Last thing, and this applies to our wall balls today, and then for our back squats after the workout, which our CrossFitters have is their extra credit. And I'm hoping that all of our CrossFitters are good CrossFitters and they're doing their extra credit. Uh, we're doing back squats today because it is Monday. So, not bottoming out in your squats, whether it's your wall balls or your back squats or any kind of squats for that matter. Um, oftentimes what we see is people here just kind of relaxing, right? Just kind of uh, relaxing and getting down at the bottom. Everything's kind of loose and relaxed. Everything's dropped forward and then trying to kind of regain tension as you come up, doesn't work, right? Everything drops forward, everything softens, the hips turn under. We want to try to maintain tension throughout the entire movement, focusing on the bottom right now. Keep the glutes engaged, the hamstrings engaged, day and night, sometimes we hit that bottom and bouncing right back up again. We do, of course, want to make sure we're getting clearly below parallel at the bottom before driving back up. But the emphasis here is making sure we maintain tension, right? We don't want to relax. Don't relax at the bottom is that everything just flops forward, get all loose, and it's horrible. So, nice and tight, the hamstrings and glutes. Tension, right back up. Keep that in mind when you're doing these today. Um, that's all I got for you. Good workout. 15 to 20 minutes. Get this week started. See you soon.